Okay, La Palette Nude 1 and 2, action. I hope your day's going well. Today I am going to be reviewing a couple of palettes that I've gotten loads of questions about and they are the L'Oreal La Palette Nude 1 and 2. I got mine for uh, $15 a piece from Walmart, but I noticed Ulta's selling them for like $19, $20 each. So definitely a pricier product for the drugstore, so I really wanted to pass along my review to you guys and I will show in this video a quick tutorial using one of these palettes as well. It's the look I've got on today. First off, I want to say I love seeing drugstore brands come out with larger palettes. It seemed like for the longest time you could only find quads from drugstore brands. And now we've seen Maybelline come out with the nudes, uh, Hard Candy's got some larger palettes, these are out. And I love that. I want to see more of that happening. But I'm going to be honest with you, um, I actually saw before these came out in my Walmart stores, does this ever happen in your stores? They'll like have a little bare space where like these palettes are going to be. So I spotted that at first and I I thought, oh, you know, it's really exciting palettes. But then the other part of me said, wait, more nude palettes? Like, come on now, how many of these things do I really need? Need is entirely the wrong word to use because I have enough when it comes to nude eyeshadows. And just to break it down here for you real quick, I think these are pretty good palettes, but I really like the second one over the first, just because I think it's more unique and it's offering something a little bit different. Um, I like the looks I can get out of this better. There's a little more interest in this palette with some berry and plum shades and here it's like I've already got a lot of brown and bronze happening in my collection. If these palettes came out like say a year after Urban Decay Naked I'd have probably been jumping up and down in the aisles to see them but it's like now while I'm glad drugstore brands are putting out new palettes can you give us something a little different? Just maybe a couple of like interesting pops and in something like this to make it worth my while you know? But what I think these palettes did well was creating a good balance balance of matte and shimmer. Um, definitely some nice shades to wear in the crease. Um, a good range of dark, medium, and light. And the textures of these shadows, if you're familiar with the Color Riche quads like this, it's that same kind of formula. It can be a little hit and miss. You know, some shades are better than others. On the whole, I was pretty impressed. I mean, I don't get that kind of like deep down excitement in my gut type feeling I get when I swatch, you know, the softness of an Urban Decay or a Lorac shadow. Does anybody else get that feeling? Like, when you touch a shadow and it's downright creamy. I mean, it's not that kind of next level experience with eyeshadow. But it's pretty good and I can turn out some great looks with these, particularly if you're putting these on top of a primer, I think you're really gonna notice them pop. But I can definitely get a greater variety of looks with the two palette compared to the one. Also, these palettes kind of have a nice weight to them. They're not at all flimsy. I really appreciate that. I also like how when you open them up, you've got a totally usable mirror right up top here. They also come with a a double-ended sponge tip and a very usable brush applicator here. That brush is great for getting around your inner corner or you know some more detailed aspects of your look. For a closer look at Le Nude Palette 1, um, you've got three matte shades in here, three entirely matte shades. One is a dusty rose, a medium brown, and a dark brown. The rest all have some shimmer in them. None of them come off as being like super loud and metallic, but just enough shimmer to kind of catch the light. Now, sometimes with eyeshadows, you'll find that the shade apply on the eyes better than they swatch or sometimes the reverse is true. They swatch better than they look on the eyes and that was the case with some of the shades in this palette, particularly this color right here which was kind of an attempt at a gold and I, it looks like kind of a pretty soft gold in the swatch but I really, um, I don't know, if you're going to give me gold, give me a great metallic gold that's going to totally pop on the lid and look practically foiled. You know, I really want that kind of a look with that particular shade and this was just a little bit dull. I was pretty pleased with the textures of the matte shades and there's a pretty kind of deep bronzy color that I like in this palette. If I'm putting this right up against its closest drugstore counterpart, which is probably the Maybelline Nudes palette, I think the quality, the texture of these shadows is a little bit better. Just more pigmentation in this kind of a palette, but I have another comparison to make here at the end before I wrap up. First I want to show you the two. This is my favorite of the two palettes because I really have enjoyed some of the looks I've gotten out of this. There are 
are some great matte shades. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six totally matte shades in this palette, including these three pinky berry shades here at the end. I love those. Um, those three together are great. But there's just more interesting things happening with this palette. In a nutshell, love this highlight. This great pearly shimmery highlight. That might be gorgeous on the face as well. I haven't tried it there yet, but I love that. Also, this second shade um, is kind of interesting. It's a pinky shimmer. Even prettier in a swatch, as you can see, than it looks in the palette. And this shade right here, the camera may not be doing it justice, but this is like the dustiest of dusty lilacs. Like, it's just hanging on to a little bit of a purple tone in that shade. And I really, really like it. It's very unique. I don't have hardly any shades like that. And actually, while there's a lot of cool things happening, these two browns here are a little bit warmer. One has shimmer, one does not. And so that gives you some versatility. And then, like I said, you cannot go wrong with this berry, this plum shade. I love those. So compared to La Palette 1, La Palette 2, I think, has more interesting little things happening that just draw me in, make me want to use it, help me come up with different looks. Whereas, I mean, I feel like I end up getting a lot of the same looking looks, oh gosh, um, when I use this palette. Even if I'm using different shades, it's just, you know, the gradient of colors always comes off looking kind of similar. Now, the other comparison I think you need to be aware of if you're looking at this price range, okay, $15 to $20 for each of these, um, the Coastal Sense Revealed 1 and 2 palettes. I really like both of these. These are around $20 last time I checked. Revealed Palette 1 is loaded with Naked 1 and 2 dupes. I've outlined many of those on my blog, so you can check that out for more details, but it's mattes, it's shimmers, it's metallic. And then the Revealed 2 is everything you might want in terms of the pinky berry color family. Lots of rosy shades in here, burgundy shades, rose gold. I would say this does the pinky and rosy looks a little bit better, and this one does the plummy looks a little better, because this deep dark plum in this palette is really, really good. But we really can't talk palettes in this price range without bringing up these, because these have double the shades that the L'Oreal palettes have for about the same price range, and the quality is great. But this look that I am sporting today is a plum smoky eye. I was really happy with the way it came out. This is probably one of my favorite looks to do with this La Palette Nude 2, so here's a quick tutorial. I'm first just applying a little primer to my lid. This is from NYC. It's the City Proof 24 Hour. Then I'm going to start off with my Sonia Kashuk Medium Shadow Brush and this berry color. I'm going to just pat that all over my lid. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap um, there on the innermost part so we can put a lighter shade there. I'm going into that same shade with my Sigma E25 brush. And this I'm going to take right here through the crease. Going to go to the inner part, the outer part, just back and forth windshield wiper motions here. And then I'm just building that color up even more, um, pulling it upward and outward. I'm going to take this plum at the end with the same brush. That is going to go right here on the outer part of the crease. Blends really easily over the top of the berry color. And then I just tapped into that same plum with my small shadow brush from Sonia Kashuk and I'm patting that on the outer corner. Then I'm taking some of this shade that looks kind of grayish, but actually it's more of like a soft, dusty, plum, berry type of shade. And I'm just applying that over the border, kind of a transition color. I love this pearly shade here as my highlight, so I'm picking up that with my E40, and that's going to go just underneath the brow. I'm also going to take some of that shade with the brush that comes with this palette, and I'm going to put that right around the inner corner of the eye, so just here on the inner part of the lid, and then right around the tear duct as well. For upper liner, I'm just going to use a black liquid. This is my Jordana Color Envy in Black Envy. And I'm just going to sweep a thin line all the way across. I forgot, I actually kind of made that wing somewhat dramatic over here on the other side, so I'll pull it out just a little bit further. And then I'm putting a plum liner in my lower inner rim. This is Mally's Black Violet. Just sweep that right through here. It starts to give us kind of a smoky vibe without being quite as stark as a black. And then I'm just kind of dotting it on my lower lash line as well. Then I'm going to go over all of that with the plum and an angled brush. Going to kind of meet up with my winged liner here. 
and just kind of top off the plum. And then what I think gives a really nice smokiness is to take a pencil brush, so um, definitely fuller than that angled brush, and going into the berry shade, and just sweep this over the lower lash line, and it's gonna give just a great um, kind of smudgy look to everything. And then just finish the look with some mascara and false lashes if you want, and you're done. The other things happening with this look, just real quickly, I reviewed this Laura Geller palette very recently over on the Express channel. This is my blush. This is my highlight. That's the Baked French Vanilla highlight, by the way, that's like legendary in my highlight collection. Also, this is from the Estee Lauder Courage collection, and it's this really soft kind of dewy champagne highlight. I popped that over the top, and that's what's giving this real glowiness right up in here. It's like the French Vanilla brightens, but this added the dew. I'm wearing my e.l.f. matte lip color in Tea Rose, and then why not make the matte color shiny, right? I've got a little bit of this Estee Lauder Pink Innocence Shimmer Gloss, the Pure Color Gloss, on top of that. So again, to wrap this up, bottom line, um, I think these are good palettes from the drugstore. I think they are a little bit pricey for what you're getting. The Coastal Sense Revealed 1 and 2 palettes should not be overlooked if this is the kind of price range you're looking at, but I don't find these to be better than an Urban Decay or a Too Faced palette. I just don't think the shadows are quite as good, but I really have come to enjoy this La Palette Nude too because I love the plum looks I can get out of it. So I hope this review sorted a few things out for you. Um, thank you so much for taking time to watch, and I'll see you later. Bye.